Welcome to SVG TV News for Friday, July 28, 2017. I am Jennifer Richardson with the details. Government Senator Luke Brown told Parliament on Thursday that the government did not lose interest in the then National Commercial Bank by selling majority of its shares to the East Caribbean Financial Holdings Limited, ECFH. According to Brown, the ULP administration has displayed exceptional strategic decision-making in regards to the bank and will continue to do so. Action is not in the best interest of the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the people of this country. Because anything beyond just a cursory look would show how strategic we have been in everything that we have done in relation to the Bank of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The Prime Minister has already put this thing in historical context. And he told us on a number of occasions about the motivations for divesting the shares. And in the banking industry, like many other industries, there is a dynamic at work. Things don't stand still. There are dynamic situations, and we have to respond to this dynamic. And that is precisely what the government has done in this case. We responded to a situation where the company, Eastern Caribbean Financial Holdings, that became the majority shareholder in the Bank of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, holding 51%, was about to embark upon a transaction by selling the majority of its shares into a different or to a different entity. And we thought that that transaction would have been inimical to our interest. Another government senator, Julian Francis, dismissed talks he claimed were made by members of the opposition that the ULP government sought to destroy the financial institution. Francis said the government instead helped to rebuild the bank, which according to him was mismanaged under the then New Democratic Party administration. Because of the mismanagement of the bank by the New Democratic Party, the bank in New York refused to have correspondent banking relations. So they So we need to strengthen our capital base of the bank. Let us go look for a good part. When we look inside to sell the bank as it is, the statutory bodies and government institutions are owing a hundred and something million dollars to the bank. You see, all right? If we got rid of those out of the bank, the value of the bank would be increased significantly. Not Francis said Vincentians will be able to reap the benefits of the government's strategic financial decisions in the near future. We got hundred million dollars to borrow from the city at four percent. And we were paying the National Commercial Bank nine percent for the overdrafts. And opposition MP Major Sint Kalea Leacock is of the opinion that there are still financial and liquidity problems existing in the life of BOSVG. In Parliament on Thursday, Leacock stated that the government appears to be th taking action to address acute challenges of the financial institution. He, however, added that the government needs to look at the bigger picture for the future of the bank. So today, Mr. Speaker,
Executive Director of the Regional Security System, the RSS, Captain Arrington Sherland, has said that there is a great need for the improvement of the state of law and the reduction of crime in societies today. Speaking at the opening of the inaugural All Right Conference earlier this week, which saw the attendance of several high-ranking regional crime-fighting officials, Captain Sherlin expressed concern with what he termed as an alarming decline in the behavior amongst youths across the region. He said the situation is one that needs the support of governments and all law-abiding citizens. It must be recognized that a government's it is a government's obligation to provide a fair and satisfactory social environment, that the government has a commitment to the reduction of social injustice, and it has a commitment to the determination in ensuring the maintenance of law and order throughout the society. Secondly, public support for the law enforcement agencies by ensuring that all information on criminal activity is brought to the attention of those agencies. I am therefore inclined to suggest that the entire society has an important role in the prevention of crime. While the police and the courts take the primary responsibility for the control of crime, I have to reiterate, it is not only the law enforcement agencies, but it is a whole of society approach. And as we deliberate for the next two days as law enforcement agencies, I think it is important for us to continue that momentum into the whole of society, to include the church, to include the youth organizations. It will close the entire loop. The St. Vincent and the Grenadines Electricity Services, Finlec, has been engaged in activities geared towards boosting the capacity of its workers in a new area, that of refrigeration and air conditioning repair. Speaking from the Vinlek Power Station in Kane Hall, facilitator, lecturer in refrigeration and air conditioning at the SVG Community College Division of Technical Vocational Education, Gary Peters, highlighted the importance of such a training exercise for the Vinlek workers. Um, at this point, I'm engaged in a training session in preventative maintenance with the uh, technicians at the St. Vincent Electricity Services. And this training program is quite important. It's a five-day training workshop. And this would allow them to have the ability to do some basic maintenance on the refrigeration systems, the air conditioning systems in particular. Um, because air conditioning systems, if they're not properly maintain can be inefficient and they consume a lot of electricity and I think this shows a sense of leadership because the institution itself is looking into developing its own resource to have these basic maintenance done to maintain efficiency on these systems. Peter said he was heartened by the high level of enthusiasm shown by the participants. Well, to tell the truth, I wish I could have participants like these all the time when I train. These guys have been very enthusiastic. They've allowed me to, um, at night, re-strategize how I'm coming to deliver the next day because the material that I had planned, I thought it was overwhelming for guys who were just getting into this program, but they've actually received it so well that I, and I've been so engaged that I have to upgrade the material. You know, it has been so far three full days, really full days of real engagement and their, their desire is almost like you're, 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 you're happy as a lecturer, a facilitator to come in and meet such enthusiasm. So it has been really excellent. Electrical maintenance supervisor at Finlay, Grafton Brown, said the training exercise is timely, adding that the workers will be able to do more for the company as well as their communities. The air conditioning units are not serviced properly. They accumulate dust, microbes, harmful material, and so um, cause people to be sick. And also, um, with this training too, um, able to help out relatives and friends, you know, neighbors with a problem. 
Oh, they are very excited. Before one, um, I, I attended numerous courses in Vilnius, locally and overseas, and I find this to be the, I don't know, the most exciting one so far because of um, the ramifications, you know. Um, air conditioning is required a lot in the home, in um, vehicles, in the office space. The use is increasing. And I find with this knowledge, you'll be able to help, help out a lot, make a co good contribution towards the company and the community. SVG TV News team was able to catch up with some of the participants who expressed elation for the opportunity given and highlighted some of what they learned. Well, this program has been a, a new experience for me and I have a positive report because I have learned a lot and it wasn't what I expected it to be. So every day we come to the classroom, the instructor gave us uh, tons of new information that widened my knowledge so I know a lot more about refrigeration and how it helps us here in Vienna. I, I know how the AC actually works, so the more hot air come in, the more the air condition you're going to work, which will um, increase our own use, whether at home or at the plant where we work. So from now on, I will really guide them how to keep the air condition working at a better um, rate. I, I'm a bit excited. As a matter of fact, I, we need further training. We're dealing in an environment where we are cooling is important. And I see it now at the power station. We have various condition units and so on. We're able to do basic maintenance, basic checks and so on, so that we, we can do the basic thing. And if it get elaborate, then we can call in the professional. And this does created efficiency and uh, um, save costs on the company. And from a personal level, these days every home needs a cooling system and um, able to assist personally, families and friends, so we can contribute also to the community. And a lecturer at the SVG Community College, Division of Technical Vocational Education, Gary Peters, said the St. Vincent Electricity Services Vinlec is showing a greater level of leadership in the area of energy conservation. Peter stated that if necessary, more advanced training in the field can be provided and added that Vinlec has been an excellent partner to the National Ozone Unit. Well, if the need be, then certainly I mean, I'm into training. I, um, I have a high interest in air conditioning and refrigeration. And apart from that, I've also worked with the, there's the environmental aspect of it as well. And this has also been a feature of this training with the whole National Ozone Unit and the phasing out of the refrigerants that were harmful to the environment. Um, we are promoting like more energy efficient alternative and environmental friendly alternatives. So there's been a lot of work over the past couple of years um, and with Vinlec on board it is a really positive thing because I think our program in terms of the National Ozone Unit has now a partner who is really demonstrated that it is very important to be environmentally conscious, energy conscious, you know, and this shows some sort of leadership as I said earlier. Vincentian Brian Mayers and Dominican Alec Coriol, who have been charged in connection with a drug bust at sea, which netted just over a thousand pounds of marijuana, appeared in the Denary First District Court in St. Lucia on Thursday. Mayers, who is from Chatebele, and the Dominican National were each charged with possession of a controlled drug and possession with intent to supply. They have been remanded in custody and are scheduled to return to court on September 9, 2017. According to the police in St. Lucia, the Marine Police Unit was conducting a routine patrol on July 21st when they intercepted a vessel off the Viewfort coast around 8.45 p.m. The Dominican sustained a gunshot wound to the shoulder in the process. Just over 1,000 pounds of marijuana was recovered from the vessel. Both men were subsequently arrested. On August 1st each year, St. Vincent and the Grenadines joins with the rest of the Caribbean region to celebrate Emancipation Day with numerous cultural events to commemorate the historic date. One such event has been held over the years in the community of Diamonds Village, 
where villagers on the night of July 31st would gather at a central point and reflect on the journey of their African ancestors and their role in the fight for emancipation. The event will be hosted by the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, along with the SVG National Trust, the European Union, and the Diamonds Village Heritage Organization. The event will look at the contribution of the African race, as well as that of the Garifuna people. Speaking at a media conference on Thursday afternoon at the Grenadines House, Member of Parliament for South Central Winwood, Sabota Caesar, welcomed the Garifuna delegation from Guatemala, who will be part of this year's celebrations in Diamond. What is special this year is that historically we focused only on the contributions made by Africans towards the fight for emancipation. But this year we have sought with the assistance, as I noted, of the European Union to incorporate not only persons of an indigenous heritage locally, but to bring persons as far as from Guatemala to be with us in the celebrations on that night. This year, we want to invite everyone to come to Diamonds on July the 31st. This year, we want to invite all the world to participate in the in Diamonds. We are going to begin the activities approximately 7 p.m. We will start at 7 p.m. And we have a list of speakers our featured speaker will be Decima Alexander Hamilton. Around, we sing, we entertain ourselves, we have speeches, reflections. And it ends with a big feast at midnight. Urging persons to come out and be a part of the historic event, Minister Caesar highlighted discussions being carried out with the European Union. Those persons who would have prepared speeches today. And we are in the process, after discussions with the European Union, to compile information as to what occurred when the indigenous people who were removed from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, what transpired since they arrived in Latin America. So we're in the process of writing a grant, first 50 years of arrival. Entonces estamos en procesos de hacer una solicitud de fondos para los primeros 50 años de la llegada. This will be very important as we connect our history. Expressing his commission's elation in being part of the festivities, Head of the Garifuna delegation, Eric Rodriguez, said the cultural activities provide a significant avenue for the exposure of the Garifuna history and heritage. Es importante consolidar la historia. So it's very important for us to consolidate the history. Hoy nos hemos dado cuenta Today we have, we have realized que hemos partido de herramientas occidentales that we are from um, occidental Element. elements y esas herramientas lo que han causado simplemente es el divisionismo and these, these elements or these instruments what they've caused is division amongst us países from different countries han iniciado la búsqueda de nuestro verdadero origen we have started the search or the quest for our origins y nos muestra and it has shown us que siempre hubo esa confusión, that there's always been this level of confusion. Pero que hoy, a partir de lo que hemos generado, but today, um, from what we've already generated, sabemos hacia dónde vamos. But we know where we're going. Also speaking at the media briefing on Thursday was trustee of the National Trust, Luis Mitchell Joseph, who said discussions held at the symposium earlier in the day were of great significance. On behalf of the St. Vincent and the Grenadines National Trust, I would like to say it has been our honor to co-host this symposium today with the Diamonds Village Community Heritage Group. And I would like to say that 
this discussion that we had today about our history is a discussion that the National Trust has been wanting to have for a very long time. So I want to thank you um, for approaching us through yeah, Honorable okay. Minister Suboto Caesar. And it has been our pleasure to really have an opportunity to bring to light the issues of the some of the falsities in our history and the need for us to do further research um, through collaboration with our colleagues um, in the in the Garifuna diaspora. Mitchell Joseph further issued a challenge to the local Garifuna Heritage Foundation. For more publications, not just the hosting of symposiums, but ensure that at the end of the symposiums there is documentation that our students can have so that they can learn more about our history. So we have to push for actually publications. And I also think we need to work on raising funds for a scholarship for Vincentians to study Vincentian history and to do the research that needs to be done. I hope that the presence of the Ministry of Education here today is a good sign that they are open to actually um, changing the curriculum so that a real Vincentian history is actually taught. Teachers are being encouraged to utilize the skills gained at the Capacity Training Workshop, which concludes here today, to aid in the development of the nation's children. The encouragement comes from President of the SVG Teachers Union, Oswald Robinson, as he spoke with SVG TV News. Robinson said, the union is proud to work with the Ministry of Education and the Canadian Workers, the Canadian Teachers Federation, adding that he is pleased with the effort and enthusiasm shown by the participants. I think um, from what has transpired so far, I'm generally satisfied with the expected outcomes. Um, the teachers are empowered. They have acquired new skills in, in maths, in language arts, in TVET, ICT, science. And I am very happy that the Teachers Union could have partnered with the Canadian Teachers Federation and also the Ministry of Education in executing another summer institute. I have seen a lot of hard work being put in by the co-tutors. I've seen commitment from the participants. People were enthusiastic. As a matter of fact, when it comes to lunchtime, people were still walking. You know, they forget they had to eat. And that shows the, the level of commitment and loyalty they have. And so I am extremely happy that the teachers demonstrated that. Robinson further encouraged the participating teachers to pass on the knowledge gained at the workshop. I want that they take back that same sort of attitude back to the classroom. I have asked them in the closing remarks today to work with their principals or in the case of the secondary school where you have departmental heads that they would have a conversation to ensure that they have a little time that they could pass on the, the same information they have gathered from this workshop to their other colleagues, right? The, the Canadians had a wonderful time, hence in Miss Annie Grenadines, the hospitality was awesome. And we really appreciate them coming to our shows and working with our tutors. Our local tutors, they were fantastic. They did an, a great job and we want to salute them, you know, for continuing to build on the foundation that others would have set. Royal Salzburg, a facilitator from the Canadian Teachers Federation, said he was heartened by the enthusiasm shown by the teachers, adding that the workshop created an opportunity to work along with fellow teachers. I think so. Um, I, uh, just judging by their reactions and their enthusiasm and Megan and I in the language arts program made sure we did a lot of role play and real situations in the classroom and modeled it and had the participants try it out so we could see exactly that they got the idea and give them feedback and uh, it seemed to happen. Yeah. Okay, and do you think the relationship between the St. Vincent Teachers Union and the Canadian Teachers Federation will continue to grow as the years go by? I would hope so. Um, this program isn't really about us coming to 
teach and share. It's a, the program is about an opportunity to collaborate with colleagues. That, that's what, exactly what it was. There are local teachers here and our co-tutors here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We were really able to collaborate and plan together and do the whole thing together. And that's how we learn from each other and that, that's what it's all about. 46 young individuals were earlier today presented with certificates for their participation in the 2017 National Center for Technological Innovation Incorporated NCTI Information Communication Technology Summer School Program. Ranging from ages 7 to 16, the participants were exposed to various ICT skills in robotics, graphic designing, animation, and other fun activities. Nikita Tony tells us more in this report. Continuing to pave the way for persons here in SVG to gain certification in various information communication technology or ICT-based fields, the National Center for Technological Innovation, NCTI, for the last six years has provided an avenue for youths ranging from ages 7 to 16 to gain basic ICT skills at their annual ICT summer school program. At a closing ceremony held earlier today, Friday, July 28, 46 participants who were further split up into two classes were presented with certificates for completing basic skills training in robotics, animation, graphic design, and game development or programming. Programming. Class 2 instructor Jamal Glasgow commended all participants for their dedication and hard work over the course of the program. I know you guys learned a lot of things during this two-week program. I'm hoping that you take what you've learned here today and throughout the previous classes and take it home and apply it in your schoolwork and you can build uh, different posters, make different games, you can even come back for next year's 2018 summer school program. Encouraging the participants to always strive to be leaders, instructor for class one, Deano Williams, said he is looking forward to the 2018 program. We want each of you to realize how great you are and when you're in a position to follow, you follow, so that one day you can be a good leader, okay? So I want you to take this message with you. When you go back to your school, when you're with your family, your friends, and even share it with them. Okay, and as Jamal said, 2018 is coming, and I want to welcome you to Summer Program 2018. Some of the participants took the opportunity to share their experience. I had a lot of fun. I learned how to develop games, make posters, animation, build robots. A lot of new things like animation, photoshopping, and also building robots. Our teacher, Mr. Jamal Glasgow, did a great job on ensuring that we understood everything. I want to say thank you to the teachers. You were a lot of fun. You made us laugh a lot with your funny jokes. We really had fun and we learned a lot. Thanks to my teachers who are now my favorites and my friends. And thanks again to my classmates for our new friendship. I love what we did there. It's very fun. The teachers are kind. Even when we are struggling, they will come and help us. The NCTI continues to encourage persons to take full advantage of the available opportunities to get certified in an ICT-related field. Nikita Tony reporting for SDG TV News. <laughs>